insider shot. Essentially, the stories started, they, if you were to lay them out chronologically, they start off thinking maybe about a young woman's concerns, like a woman in her 20s, love, travel, romance, and then they take on maybe some age and maturity as they move in towards the later stories, which are more domestic stories, more interested in like smaller relationships and how they're sort of played out more intimately within a household. All right, so I work at, I like this question a lot, um, I work at an old desk that somebody built for me in college, which is just like file cabinets with a piece of wood on top. And I have like little quotes sort of like taped everywhere around that are supposed to be inspirational. And one of them says, it's an Emerson quote, and it says, at my desk, I am free. I have a big computer there now, but I can remember the old days when it was just a piece of paper and books lined up around it. Um, and I work basically every morning when I wake up for as long as, as I can until I have to leave the house. I remember when I started out as a writer, when I was um, an undergraduate and then a graduate student, I didn't have a computer. I mean, we had like, well, first we had paper and pen, and then we had typewriters, and then we had this kind of hybrid of a typewriter and a computer that could retain one line of print, and so I worked on that for a long time. Uh, but what I remember mostly from before we had computers was you would print out a story that you were working on, and then in order to rewrite it, we would, or at least I would, cut out parts of it and then tape them in in different orders. So I think I still do that a little bit in my mind. In fact, I have a colleague who's my age, and just like maybe a year ago, he came up to me and he's like, you can do this fascinating thing on a computer, which is like, you highlight one section and then you copy it and move it. And I was like, we sound like dinosaurs to our students. And then I have like, um, sort of like a list of projects to do every day when, it, when I sit down to write. Because sometimes it feels like the story itself, even if I'm not satisfied with it, I don't know how to re-enter into it. Um, so I have a list of tasks, like, you know, on page two, try to describe a bird or try to fix the relationship on page seven. And so like ways to kind of isolate an entire story. I had an old professor um, years ago who said that it's impossible for the writer to keep the entire narrative in their mind so that it's pretty important to um, be, think of it in smaller parts and, and be able to rearrange it that way. Basically, I think of the days starting this way, like a lot of coffee, and then a book by somebody else, and then those things mix properly, you can like jump the tracks and suddenly be working on your own work if, if the elements come together properly. But definitely other books seem to be the main fuel. Well, I used to read housekeeping pretty religiously in the morning, and I, you know, I read poetry pretty seriously as well. Like I think of poets as sort of you know, keeping the language alive. And sometimes I tell my students the fastest way I think to write better is to read poetry. Wallace Stevens, John Ashbery. I have a John Ashbery uh, epigraph at the front of my book, so he's been a really important voice in my life. You know, the, the title story, um, Bobcat, I listen to a hymn again and again and again in my mind. Uh, it's called It Is Well With My Soul. And um, the guy who wrote it, his four daughters, three or four daughters, had died in a shipwreck. And a few weeks later, he wrote that. And he, of course, it's a hymn, so he doesn't mention the shipwreck. Um, but there's some sort of like incredible buoyancy and sadness and just kind of suppressed pain plus comfort in the song that somehow seemed to me really inspirational and really like taught me a lot about what art can do. So I listened to that quite a bit when I was working on the title story. For me, it is hard to avoid the internet. Um, I mean, as I was saying before, I can remember a time when there was nothing in a room except for the page that you were working on. And that had its own kind of um, challenges because it's sort of terrifying to face. But on the other hand, like now the idea that there's the thing that you're working on and then all these worlds behind it, it's thrilling and it's such an exciting time. But I think for the writer, it can be too tempting. It definitely can be for me. I'm sort of reading a bunch of 
books right now in preparation for the book I want to write. I kind of want to write a big family romance, like the story of a family that's an ideal family and that is sort of like burst apart over the course of the novel. And then I'm not sure yet how they get put back together. So I've been sort of like lining up books on my desk that like if I put them all together, hopefully they'll create this book eventually.